Hey everyone, Tesla stock investors got some great news this morning that sent the stock price up more than 16% as of this recording. So I'll review what this latest news is, why it's great news for Tesla stock investors, and what it could mean for longer term. So let's get right into it. I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com slash parkev for the 10 best stocks to buy now. All right, the news, which you've probably already heard by now, is that Tesla is getting approval for full self-driving or its assisted self-driving in China. So after flurry of meetings with top officials in Beijing, they signaled its blessing for Tesla to roll out its advanced driver assistance service in the car maker's second biggest market. Tesla CEO is seeking to expand use of this software globally as the company confronts the prospect of lower sales growth this year. And that's been the big story with Tesla is declining sales. And now Elon Musk is hurrying to roll out this full self-driving feature, the robo taxi feature, because that's arguably what's going to lift Tesla's valuation higher because sales growth is not going to be the catalyst that lifts Tesla's stock price higher. This is the next thing that can be the catalyst to lift the share prices up higher. Now, Chinese officials told Tesla that Beijing has tentatively approved the company's plan to launch its FSD software in China. Now, Tesla will be partnering with Baidu using its mapping services and the data will be kept in China. It's unclear yet if Tesla will be able to repatriate that data so that it can use to help develop its full self-driving in the US as well as in China. Now, I've been saying for you know several months now that full self-driving or driverless car technology is more likely to get more advanced in China because of the easier regulatory process, or I shouldn't say easier, but I should say Chinese government officials appear more enthusiastic about adopting the driverless car technology on their roads compared to what's going on so far in the US, where city and state officials are not as enthusiastic about allowing this feature to expand. They've been tentative. They've been offering approvals to some of these self-driving companies like Waymo and GM's Cruise. There are driverless cars on the roads today here in the US, but it's been very, very tentative. They've been hesitant. And anytime there's an issue, they pull back and they you know, retrench and they make it even harder for these companies to roll out this technology. I highlighted earlier that Tesla's sales have been falling and Tesla has been losing market share. Specifically, Tesla's sales in China of its vehicles made in the country slid last quarter by almost 4% from a year ago, while the rest of the EV market recorded 15% growth in the same period. So the rest of the EV market expanded by 15%, while Tesla declined by 4%. So as competition has increased, Tesla's sales has struggled not just in China, but worldwide. Remember, Tesla was the only game in town for a long time, or one of the few games in town if you wanted an electric vehicle. Tesla was arguably the only place you could go to. But since 2020, since many of these EV companies got billions and billions of dollars of government stimulus, and on the consumer side, trillions of dollars of stimulus have been passed. It's made it easier for competitors to rise up and increase supply of electric vehicles in the market. And that's been bad news for Tesla. So it's understandable Tesla is pivoting now to the full self-driving feature because that can be the next catalyst for the company like I mentioned earlier. Now, in the US, Tesla last week have the subscription price of FSD to entice people to buy. But on Friday, the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration opened an investigation into Tesla's more basic driver assist system, which the authority said is tied to avoidable crashes and fatalities. 
Tesla didn't respond to comments on the probe. And like I mentioned, the regulatory agencies in the U.S. have been a lot stricter on development of this full self-driving. And anytime there's an issue, anytime there's accidents, they tend to blame this full self-driving feature and neglect to look at the bigger picture where accidents happen all the time on the road due to human error. But computer error is judged, it seems like, more harshly than human error. And it'll be interesting to see at what point is there an inflection where these regulatory agencies look at the full self-driving data and determine that, you know what, out of every 100,000 miles driven, there are fewer accidents with full self-driving compared to human drivers. But what will be the barrier, right? How much better does full self-driving need to be in order to gain government approval? Because it's not going to be where out of every 100,000 miles, full self-driving proves to be 2% more effective or 2% fewer crashes, right? That's not what's going to drive the headlines. That's not what's going to drive the regulatory agencies in the U.S., in my opinion. It's going to be more about, look at all these crashes that are happening with full self-driving instead of comparing it to human drivers. And so the threshold for enabling full self-driving I feel is going to be much harder in the US and it's going to take many more years for regulatory agencies to start adopting and improving these technologies for, you know, broader adoption where it's broad based every state, you know, every city, you're going to have these in the thousands and in the millions on the roads. Now for Tesla stock investors who are asking if they should buy Tesla stock on this news or if it's a bargain now because of this news, I will point you to its valuation again. And I've been talking about this for a while. Tesla's trading at a forward price to earnings now after this big jump of 53.97, right? 53.97, as you can see on this top left hand side. That's more expensive than Nvidia at a forward price to earnings of 28. Microsoft at 30, Alphabet at 20, Meta at 18, and Apple at 24. So if you're looking at Tesla as purely a tech company and not even considering it as a car company, fine. I would argue with that. I would argue that you got to use, I would use a more blended valuation, a large percentage valuation accorded to its car business, and then a fraction of its valuation afforded to its tech business. But even if, even if I don't argue that, and I say 100% tech company, it's still more expensive than the largest tech companies in the world today. And NVIDIA and Microsoft are benefiting from the rising effectiveness of artificial intelligence, arguably more so than Tesla is. And then if you compare it to car companies, well, then it's not even a comparison. GM is trading at a forward PE of 4.8 and Ford is at 6.5. So Tesla is between 10, eight to 10 times more expensive than these car companies. So the valuation, in my opinion, already incorporates these prospects like eventually at some point in the future it's going to have robo taxis and full self-driving on the roads i feel that's already incorporated into tesla's stock valuation it's not as if tesla is trading at the same price as other car companies in which case i would say it's a no-brainer buy because it's trading like at the same price as other car companies but it's so much better than other car companies because it has all of these other features that could eventually turn out to be huge huge payouts but it's trading at 10 times other car companies so it's already accounting for the fact that it's better than all of the other car companies it's also trading at a valuation that suggests it's better than all of the other large cap tech companies, Nvidia, Microsoft, Alphabet, Meta, Apple. So it's already accounting for these things. So I wouldn't say this is a buying opportunity for Tesla stock investors. Nevertheless, it is great news if you already own shares of Tesla stock. Did you know that over 90% of the people that watch my channel are not subscribed?
it'll really help support my channel if you hit that subscribe button. And oh, by the way, one of the benefits of being subscribed is that I take requests from subscribers more often than I do from non-subscribers. So if you prefer that benefit, please subscribe to the channel.